Hi, Mike Madge, back with SailJuice.com. Uh, again, today we're, we're continuing our series on DN Ice Boat Racing. Uh, last week, uh, last session, we had a chance to talk with Ron Sherry, one of the top builders of uh, ice boat equipment in the world, and he took us through a nice walk through uh, his uh, hulls that he's building, what's new in hulls, what you need if you want to get started. Uh, today, uh, we have uh, the privilege of having Ron Sherry back with us again. And today he's going to be going through his lineup of different skates, uh, uh, different skates that you need for different conditions, and uh, he makes them all. So welcome back, Ron, and thanks for coming to join us again. Thanks. I'm really glad to be here. Love to promote the sport that we all love. So maybe let's, uh, a lot of times people getting into the sport again, you know, the, the, the common misconception is that, oh, they need perfect black ice. These boats will only go on perfect black ice, which, which you know is not true. But you also know that uh, under different conditions, uh, different skates or runners, as they call them in ice boats, work for different conditions. So maybe with that, you can lead us through some of the different runners that, that you make and what conditions that you would need them for. Great. Well... I think, you know, one of the most important things is to uh, keep the newer sailors and some of the recreational sailors uh, knowing what's going on, too. I will show uh, this is quite a treat because you're going to get a chance to see all of the runners that uh, Composite Concepts supplies. I'm going to show you how I actually build the race runners, but we'll also talk about the uh, the recreational sailor. And I think I'll start out there. Most every recreational sailor ends up with a Sarns plate type runner. And a lot of people bring me their Sarns plate type runners to profile for them so that they can. And it's funny because even the guys who are, you know, just the recreational sailors, they like getting out with their buddies and they like going fast. And uh, they know if they bring their runners to me, I'm going to get them sharpened exactly the way they need so they get a, a wide run range and be um, super, super fast. So, and I just want to show you my stations for uh, working on runners. So the, uh, this is a sharpening machine. And uh, just so you can kind of see what this is like. And uh, it's a 90 inch belt. Here's a runner. how I sharpen it. I flip it over and I do the same number of passes on each side. Right. But really, before I even get sharpening on a runner, the first thing I will do is I'll bring it over to this station and I'll check to make sure that the runner is straight with a straight edge. If the runner isn't straight, there's multiple ways to straighten it. This is a nice straight runner. It'll, the straight edge would rock on there if it wasn't straight. Um, heat treated runners, you need to use a ball peen hammer and you bang on the concave side and it'll actually come up because you're relieving the stress on that side. Talk to me by Bill Sarns. Once you get the, uh, make sure that it's straight, then what we do is we check the profile. And this is a, uh, and we put the runner on the straight You can block the light out. This runner actually needs a little bit of work. The sarns, are, and then you bring the uh, shims in from each side. I block the light out where the pole. Do that. If wait on there, if you don't do that, the light will be blocked out up in front because of just center of gravity. And then bring the shims in, and then you can measure this one right now. Has about 17 inches, nine inches. I have marks, and then eight inches here. So oh, about 17 inches. If I was sharpening this runner, I would get it down to 15 inches. So, and I have this very same runner in uh, 440C stainless. That's all, and all my runners that I build are 440C stainless and they're all uh, hardened to 67 Rockwell so that uh, um, you can take them to 62 Rockwell, but if you take them that hard, the edge gets uh, real brittle. So uh, trying to keep it uh, uh, simple for sure. You know, uh, the new piece will will have this uh, this type of plate runner 
and the plate runner is good for wide range, including snow. Usually, uh, when we go to start racing, the DNs, the uh, you're going to sail in uh, several different conditions, and most of the times, the, we're, they're going to look for the cleanest ice possible so that we can have top speeds and be able to sail in light air and heavy air. So I have several different styles of runners. This is the uh, low profile front steering runner. You can see it's a little shorter than the uh, other ones. And uh, um, this one runs with about uh, 14 inches of 8 thousandths flat on it. Check in on the machine there. This is a low pro uh, slipper uh, snow plate. So you can see it's more steel sticking out. And uh, this runner is also low profile. It's important to try to keep the bow of the boat at the same height because that really makes a difference in your alignment. So having a profile, and then this is a standard slipper um, runner. This, these go on sides, these are good for snow. And these ones have about uh, 10 inches of 8,000 flat. This is a uh, 30 inch, 316 narrow runner, lightweight runner. This is for when, uh, I like to use this one when you're uh, on a smaller uh, lake and you have to do a lot of tacking and jiving. So it's not quite so long, so it turns more easy. This runner also has a 100 degree edge on it and it's uh, 15 inches of 8,000 flat. This one is, or this runner is a 36 inch, 316 runner and um, it's 100 degree and this runner I use when it's uh, um, got really textured ice. In other words, snow got melted and it refroze and the ice is bumpy. And uh, this will help you bridge the bumps. So, and this is a minimum T iron. So it's, uh, you can, the steel can, this is minimum thickness you're allowed for steel, which is a little bit thinner than you're allowed for inserts. So this is a very light runner. So this works really good in light air with very little snow on or no snow on the ice. And this is also a hundred degree and this has like 22 inches of 8,000 flat, so very, very extremely flat. And then we have the, you know, kind of the best all around runner. This again is a 316 runner, but it has the wings on it. So this is a very good uh, high speed runner. Um, it works in just about any conditions. You can see that the, the stiffener that's on the side of the runner is tapered. It's tapered in the front, so it can go through snow, water, wind, whatever, and still, uh, Chris Clark did a finite analysis on the on the runners, and he found that if you get out to two inches wide, the runners like 80 percent as stiff as if you had it uh, out three inches wide. So it's it's really great to get the runner to two inches. If you took a runner, any standard runner, and just put it in a vise like this, and then push down the front end, any one inch runner will you can you can look down the edge, you can see it will bend very easily. This runner with the stiffener on it will not bend. It's much stiffer. I mean, incredibly much stiffer. And remember, when you're sailing, it's fair you keep those runners parallel and without the runners tending to bend at all, the faster and the easier it is to get a high top end, especially on bumpier ice. And this is the same kind of runner with wings, only you can see it has a quarter inch. Uh, so this is maybe it's a little softer and you want to stay on top or and it's blowing hard because this runner is heavier being it has a quarter inch of steel in it. So um, now I know I'm just trying to show you guys what we do here. Uh, this is uh, the station that I have for, for building the runners. And this is where we lay up the runners. You can see that the, uh, the runner bodies are all machined. And uh, when, when you go to build a runner, it's very important that your steel is straight, your bodies are straight, and when you actually make the runner, you want your mold to be straight. Um, I have a uh, Armstrong Millworks uh, over in Highland, Michigan. They sell me the uh, runner bodies. I buy blanks and they take five quarter hard rock maple and machine it. So it's the height of the runner and the length of the runner. And I have, as you can see, different sizes for the different runners. And then, so all these are made out of five quarters. So they start out fat and they're planed and, and, and joined till they're perfectly straight and machined to the right size. And then when I get the runner, I have a mylar pattern and I uh, 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 cut the shape on the runner, right? And then I sand, make sure it's perfectly the shape and then uh, drill the holes for the bolts because each runner has bolts that go through every other way. You can see the flange the, the 
you know, the flathead bolts that go in there, that really makes the runner strong. All right. And then after I drill the holes, I cut the slot for the, where the steel goes in. And then I uh, taper the front with another fixture set up. And then I route around the whole edge. So it's more prep work to get these bodies perfect, but it's less work once you're done building the runner because it comes out of the mold and it's pretty much just got to do the profiling and it's ready to go on the boat. So, and then you can see I have, this is the carbon. It's all set up in the layers that need to go on the, on the uh, boat. And this is the, on, in the runner actually. And this is the, you know, the body. So all of this stuff gets wetted out and put together. And then when I put it together, it goes into this oven here. And you can see I have several, I have six different style molds for building runners. And uh, this is the, uh, the oven where I cure the runners. And I'll just kind of show you what goes on here. This is just a um, insulated box that I made. You can get this kind of insulated box at Lowe's or Home Depot. And basically, I went to a shop and got the uh, and got a, made a hydraulic press for building runners, and and uh, this hydraulic press is set so that you can put multiple runners in. It's kind of set up for doing two runners right now, and I have a runner in the mold, and I was just going to show you uh, what that looks like, so you can see. So first of all, I just take the cap off. This is straight and flat. The mold is straight and flat. It's all machine, CNC machine, so it's perfect. And I use this hydraulic table so I don't break my back. My dad was very happy about that. <laughs> and uh, that's another thing that's very interesting is I started build. I was, when my, my dad used this same garage for building his ice boats. And uh, so I've been in this garage for 58 years. I mean, <laughs> quite a long time. So, so you can see now this is a, a mold and uh, it's got some pins that actually uh, hold the, uh, the mold completely perfectly lined up with itself. And then there's release on the, on the mold so I can get the runner to come out. So you can see that's, what the runner looks like coming out of the mold. I uh, put tape on the steel. And all I need to do when I pull the runner out of the, let's get the screwdriver here. Pop that out. Like nothing. So all I got to do is trim the flash off and trim the along that the, the the steel itself and you can see that runner doesn't need to be sanded or clear coated or anything it comes out of the mold done which wow. is really nice because anything i can do to avoid sanding carbon i do <laughs> yeah so. mike you got any questions is there anything yeah I can yeah a couple of questions so so we've seen all your line of skates they all look really nice now, when you go to a regatta, how many of those are you allowed to pull out or how many are you allowed to bring or race with? <laughs> for me, you know, I've been racing DNs for 50 years and I've collected runners from Russia, from everywhere when I saw something that was pretty cool. And now I'm building them all. For me, I prep. 15 sets of runners to take to a regatta 15 sets and that means making sure that the profiles are right the angles are right there's no nicks in the runners i mean it is a nightmare and for years i've been trying to eliminate some of the runners so that it's easier for me and everyone else and newbies and they don't have to have so many runners but that really hasn't it's fallen on deaf ears uh, but as far as the racing goes for regional and continental events, you're allowed nine runners. So, but I can bring 15 sets. And when you go to uh, a, um, a continental event, they give you nine stickers. And you can bring all the runners you want out to the ice, 
But once you put stickers on the runners, when you're out of nine stickers, that's all the runners that you can use. So for me, I think that the most important runners to have, you want a low pro front, you know, and and you need, and I would go with a set of three sixteenths with wings. So that would be three runners right there. I would get, have two uh, uh, three sixteenths, no wings, hundred degrees for long for the bumpy ice. I mean, and then um, maybe a, a set of tees as well. And then, and, and the slippers for the side. So um, you should have, you know, I would say that the one, the with wings, the hundred degrees and the three slippers would be the most important runners to have. And then accessories would be to get a 30 inch set and a set of tees. There's also angles that go into this whole thing. So that's where you start coming up with all these sets of runners and uh, angles are for slush, but it's very rare that we race in that condition. But sometimes it happens. John Dennis won the nationals on, on angle irons uh, in Ohio, along with the uh, uh, minimum T on the front. So, um, yeah, but I think the most important sets of runners to have first set would be a set of three sixteenths with wings with a low profile front. And then probably the second most important set of runners would be to have a good snow plates, slippers, you know, then third would be a set of hundred degree runners. So you can bridge those bumps in the lighter air. So that would be the three most important sets of runners. I think you should have. And uh, what we all do now, you know, for, for the racers, not the newbies, but uh, we, uh, we have uh, a set of travel runners that we use for getting in and out of the pits. When people uh, come down to set their boats up, they're walking from the parking lot, they end up with mud and rocks in their shoes and they walk around. And of course they come by to say hi to me. Uh, <laughs> I'm so approachable at all these events. Anyway, um, but they can be walking around with mud and rocks. And if you put your race runners on and go out to the race course, you're gonna end up with nicks in your runners, which do not, uh, promote high speed and you know in light air and every other area we have travel runners which we use to get out to the race course and we have a gun case which we usually put our choice of runners that we're going to have in and then go out to the race course to race so and then we get out to the race course we put whichever runners we think are going to work best for that condition on the boat so excellent is that well, is that good mike can i help excellent you ron that was, any that other was questions excellent. thank you Thank you very much for that. And we look forward to talking to you again. We want to learn more about the, the planks and, the, and the, uh, the masks that you built. So thanks for joining us again, Ron. We appreciate all your effort to, uh, to express all your, your knowledge with, with everything you're doing. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.